Hi there, welcome to Chesapeake Bites. I'm Chef John Shields, founder of Our Common Table. Join us as we travel around the bay taking tasty bites of all the Chesapeake has to offer. In this series, we present one recipe every Wednesday demonstrating how you can eat well, protect our environment, and rebuild our local food economy one dish at a time. This week on Chesapeake Bites, we'll be whipping up some blue catfish caddies, my reimagined rendition of our beloved caddies. These tasty morsels use the invasive yet delicious blue catfish, saving the bay one bite at a time. So to make salt cod, what they do is they pack it in coarse salt. That's all it is to it. So I thought, well, we have all this dang catfish around here. Could we make salt cat? So I packed some fillets a couple days ago in there. And look what we have. Wow. It's starting to get like cardboard, look at um, that. just like a salt cot, a piece of salt cot. I think they call that in Italian, what, bacala? Yes, they do. Yes. And many dishes are fashioned out of that particular salt cod. Well, we can do the exact same thing here with our salt cat. So that's all I did. I packed it in it and I leave it in there for three, four, five days. The only thing you wanna do every day, take it out. And if there's any moisture, just drain it out, put a little more salt in. And uh, there you go. That's beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. Now you can imagine if we ate this right now, we're gonna get our sodium content for probably in the next six to 12 months. <laughs> We don't but it want, is kosher salt. It is kosher salt. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take it and put it in water. Oh. And the best thing to do is... Um, you're rinsing it. You're going to rinse it. And you're going to keep mm. rinsing it um, actually for hours. And oh. what I would probably do after an hour, I'd take this water out, replace it, put some more fresh water in and you keep doing it. So you're, it's kind of like, you know, when you freeze dry anything and you reconstitute it, we're reconstituting the cod. You need to do this and keep it in the refrigerator for those hours? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's what we would be doing with that. So we're <laughs> gonna let that sit there and, and rest a little bit. Now, again, most, any kind of codfish cake, salmon cake, bluefish cake, whatever you have, is really just grandma's recipe to stretch that protein. Or you had it left over from the night before, right? Okay. So let's say we had a nice um, piece, a couple pieces of the blue cat over. Maybe she, uh, she cooked it, she baked it or something like that. She had some of that left over. So you take in some just potatoes, boiled potatoes. And remember, when you boil your potatoes, put some salt in the water. Otherwise, your potatoes will have absolutely no taste at all. Mm. Not a lot, but if you don't have any in it, you're going to say, ah, this dish is flat. That's so like don't pasta put... cooking. Yeah, mm -hmm. same thing with same pasta. Thing. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do first, we're going to flavor this. It's our kind of, we're making mashed potatoes. So I'm going to put some eggs in here. Um, I actually have, where's our sauteed onions? Oh, Mary's got the sauteed onions. So we have a nice big onion, sauteed that. Put that in there. Oh, that looks good. Done it. And I'll give that to you. Okay. Then I have some dill. Um, this is a dried dill. So whenever you're using a dried versus fresh, if you're using dried, use half the amount of fresh. Okay. Because when you dry things, kind of like when we did our catfish, it concentrates the flavor. So you have to be very judicious with your dried herbs. Okay. How about that? Okay. Wow. Now we got some chives. These were right out of Gertie's Gardens out back in the restaurant. <laughs> and then we have some flat leaf parsley that we're going to put in here. Mm -hmm. And then let's see what else we have here. We can get it, put in our thing here. We got the chives, the parsley, and stuff like that. I'm going to put in... You know, you know how I am. I just, <laughs> I just like a, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Why not? Huh? Why not? And I'm going to put a little bit of Tabasco in here, like a so. And I also like to use just a little bit of Old Bay because I do. And it's what I like. And so I'll do it. So I'll put a little, just a little bit. I don't want it to have, you know, too much of a flavor. But it just gives it, just gives it a little oh, bit no. extra. So anyway. It gives it a little sophistication. It does. And we all need a little sophistication in our life. Yeah, we do. All right. So 
Now it's time to get the fish in here. Okay. So I'm just going to take some catfish. I usually use either a ratio of, like if I'm using two pounds of potatoes, I probably use about two pounds of fish. Okay. Now okay. I may not use two pounds of salt cat. I might use like, uh, let's say about a pound of salt cat and mix it with the fresh. Okay. That way you're not getting too much. So I'll just, I'll just, you know, you could just put a little of this in mm -hmm. there and then you're good to go. Okay. So anyway, so that's about all we have to do now. We can just kind of mash it up a little bit like so okay. and get the potatoes. Now, this is another thing that you can make way in advance, right. you know, make this, you can have it ready for tomorrow and you know what you're going to have for dinner. So really, like Alice Waters and Shea Panese out in California, mm -hmm. she said the best mixing tools that there is in the entire world is your hands. How about that? Just yeah. wash them and use them. <laughs> when you're tossing a salad, it's a great thing because you can feel how much dressing you're putting on. You put a little bit at a time. Your hands tell you a whole lot of things. Makes sense. So there you go. So anyway, so we have a nice big cat catty mixture here. And what I'm going to do is we're going to take that and put it into the refrigerator, right? Okay. So we put that big batch of caddies into the refrigerator. I like it to sit overnight. That way it gets a little tighter, easier to work with. And then we're ready to cook. Um, what do you have here? It's mashed potatoes, right? It's really mashed potatoes with some fish. So we're just reheating it through. You could bake them. You know, spray it with a little, right. nice. or brush them with some butter, put them in the Sounds oven. Sounds like fun. Or you can saute them, you could deep fry them, you could do whatever you want to do with it. So we'll just put some of those in here. So there you go. We just we just oh, cook these beautiful. up here like oh, that. Oh my, they're gorgeous. Oh my gosh, Look at that. John. So we get those. They're a lot more. We're gonna than let we're gonna cake. let those cool. we're gonna let those cool down just a little bit because mm -hmm. I think it could be too much for our mouths to bear. <laughs> After two. But. We have crackers. We have serve. crackers. So this is this is a great thing to do with it. You, you would do these with cotties as well. You can make these nice and small or whatever. And you just put one on a cracker. Okay. And then okay. Mary also has a delicious three mustard sauce there okay. that she loves so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's this is the that's, that's this a, is a, a tartar sauce. Gotcha. But I suggest with Ooh. these just a little bit oh of a three mustard sauce and. Uh, this is some really good eating. Now, again, you know, we're doing this as a little appetizer, but you can make these things, you know, we could turn these things into nice big size things mm -hmm. and it's your dinner. Um, how they would do that in New England is they'd have some baked beans with the fish cakes and uh, and you, you got the perfect meal. Oh, I'd say. Yeah. And that is perfect. Yeah. So that's beautiful. So what are these about uh, two ounces a piece? They're about two ounces mm -hmm. a piece. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's a beautiful presentation. Now, tell me about the... The, the sauce here. Is that something you mixed up? or is Yeah, that yeah, it? yeah. So it um, basically has three different kinds of mustard, a yellow mustard, a grain mustard, um, uh, and another um, double grain, a thicker grain mustard. Perfect. So we use um, three of those in there and then put a little bit more, you know, hot sauce and so forth. But it works really nice with seafood. And uh, I use that a lot. Right. So again, just these are just some ideas of what we can do, you know, with these invasives, how we mm -hmm. can kind of eat our way out of this problematic and eat our way out deliciously, actually. Absolutely. So, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Uh, beautiful. So even though we have a new some new visitors into our um, into our bay, we can continue this celebration, you know, of, of the best that Maryland has to offer. Um, one of the places that you can look at is marylandsbest.net. Great resource for everything that's local, everything that's Maryland. Uh, Maryland's Best Seafood, another great site for you to check out. Tells you when things are in season, where you can find mm -hmm. them. Um, and the important part is that we know that, that we have that in our heads, and we're able to get out there and shop and buy all this amazing product that people really work very hard. Jack, you're one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it takes a lot of effort to get these from the water and in whatever form they are presented in to you. So exactly. it's, it's, it's 
to be appreciated. For sure. It is to be appreciated. And there are many different choices that consumers have of what type of products to get. Right. And so when you make that decision to buy things that are from Maryland or from the Chesapeake region, not only you're getting the best food that you could possibly get, but you're keeping that money in our communities to build them and make them stronger. And it helps us to rebuild our local food economy. Absolutely. And, and so when I'm telling you, get you to this farmer's market, get you to your ye, to your local fishmonger, <laughs> and then we can have everything that we would need here. We got our crabs, we got our oysters, we got everything. Thanks so much for watching. We hope that you got some ideas to recreate in your own kitchen and learned a little something along the way. For more information on our common table and our mission to eat well, protect our environment, and rebuild the local food economy one dish at a time, check out our website and join us on social media.